Hey guys, welcome to another tour through my toolkit. Today we're going to talk about airflow and specifically we're talking about this guy right here. I have two tools that I'm going to show you right now. This is called a large vein anemometer. Uh, large uh, is helpful because it's got this really wide tunnel that it's sending the air through and the uh, veins that turn because of the air that's moving through it are really, really big, which means that you don't have to point it exactly like the air is going in this general vicinity. Uh, I can have it pointed this way, I can have it pointed this way, and it'll catch it because it's so big. So that's the large vein part. Anemometer means that it's going to actually measure the flow of air with these moving veins. That's very helpful because it's actually measuring feet per minute, which is a velocity. To get CFM, which is cubic feet per minute, I have to know what the cross-sectional area is that I'm measuring, and that's where we're going to put in, we're going to talk about this register uh, area behind me. By the way, this right here is in the $500 range. This big guy, I call it a passive flow hood. You can see how big this is. I could actually fit my entire body into this thing. This is also very useful. This is in the $1,500 to $2,000 range, um, or even more if you're getting a commercial model. They, they uh, are able to measure very specific ranges of CFM. So if you got a residential model versus a commercial model, then that would be two different machines in many cases. So the thing about it is that uh, that's a very nice tool. I do not own that. I rent that from a colleague of mine who doesn't use it every day, and there don't need to be a million of these floating out there just sitting idle. So whenever I need one for a job that specifically calls for it, I use that. But in the meantime, this guy does me just fine. And it's because I have to calibrate this that makes it a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna explain what I mean here. First of all, that right there is built into a soffit that is uh, very difficult to access. And also you can see from this, uh, in the first place, this is very uncomfortable. And in the second place, it doesn't cover the entire soffit, so there's no way I can get an accurate measurement with this very fine, very expensive piece of equipment. So what I need to do first is I can take a measurement with, with something that actually measures the flow of air that does not need the K factor, and I'm gonna explain what that is in a minute, um, and then I can use that to calibrate the K factor for something like this. When we look at that register right there, that register is three and a half inches high and nine inches long. So that is a cross-sectional area of 31.5 square inches. However, if you notice, and you can look at these at your, in your own house or where you're working or wherever you are right now, there uh, are pieces of metal in the middle of this thing and air is not uh, going through the metal parts. So that is what the K factor is for. The K factor is telling you how much net free area there is in this thing. Now, the K factor is not written on the back of this. It's not written on the front of it. It's not written anywhere uh, except in the manufacturer's literature. And how do I know who manufactured this thing? I don't, is the short answer. You're never gonna really know that in the field. In fact, I'm working on a brand new building and it is almost impossible for me to get the mechanical engineer to give me the K factor from the manufacturer of the things that we just bought that we're going to put in. So uh, regardless, you're going to need to have to figure that out for, for yourself, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Now this is a register that I can measure with the big boy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that so that I can get the actual CFM out of one register so that I can know what the K factor is for all of the registers in my entire house. Um, this is important because all of the registers are generally going to be pretty much the same, and you want to know if they are not before you begin this. So we cover this register, and you have to wait for a minute for it to settle down. Great. We're getting about 58 CFM with this guy. Now I'm going to uh, know for a fact that it's 58 out of this, or that's what I got with my very expensive tool, and I'm going to pick up my anemometer. Now in the settings for this, you can press and hold this button right here, and get to the square inches of cross-sectional area, because remember what we're trying to get is cubic feet per minute, which is a three-dimensional, it's velocity around uh, through a cross-sectional area. So that's 31.5 square inches, and that's what I've got. Now, like I said, some K factors are 0.9, some are um, you know, 0.5 if it's wood on a floor. Um, so we don't know what that is yet, but I just wanted to show you through this. So basically I wanna get to the main screen, and what I wanna read is feet per minute. 
That's what I'm after. So for right now, I can go ahead and read this in feet per minute, and I'll do the math myself for you so that you can see how we figure this out. Now, just like it shows in my book, Home Performance Diagnostics, you wanna use a timed sample when you do this. So I'm going to go into the mean mode and take a timed sample for this. So now that I've taken my timed sample, I can see that there are 351 feet per minute coming through that register. So now we do some very simple math. So now that we've got the new K factor of 0.76 programmed into this guy, I can just select to view the CFM that's coming out of the register. And now I can just hold it up to that, take a timed mean, just like before. And we have about 100 CFM coming out of that register. So now this is how you can start to combine multiple tools. And again, you don't need to own everything, but you need to know how to get access to it because there's always a different way that you can be testing. If you want to get more experience with airflow testing, check out this video uh, that I'm pointing to right now on uh, airflow testing. And there's eight different ways that I do. Uh, I'm going to show you those tools as well in more detail later. And by the way, if you liked this video, please thumbs up on it and also comment below. And I always respond to uh, comments on my channel. So please feel free to engage in conversation and also subscribe. It's really important that I uh, have a regular audience for this so that I know that people are actually watching this stuff and not, you know, I'm not speaking into a void. So thanks very much for watching. I'm Corbett Lunsford. Tune in next time.